If you ask most indie devs these days, there's a good chance they'll say that the Nintendo Switch is the best place for their games. At the last count, Nintendo Switch has sold just less than 15 million units worldwide, and Nintendo are going out the way to try and get indies on their platform. So what is it about the Switch that's getting indie developers all hot under the collar? A host of indie devs have been speaking to PC Gamer this week about the merits of releasing their games on the Switch compared to other platforms like Steam. According to Tyler Sigmund of Red Hook Studios, developers of Darkest Dungeon, the Switch is a good platform for indies because of the portability. Quote, We thought with Darkest Dungeon being a turn-based game, it would be a perfect fit for that. It's kind of structured as a really good handheld game, even though that was never the goal. When asked about the sales of Darkest Dungeon on the Switch, Sigmund said Steam still made up the majority of their revenue, but they have been really happy with sales on Switch. Switch. Dodge Roll Games, developer of Enter the Gungeon, are also hot on Nintendo's platform. Back in December of last year, Dodge Roll tweeted saying that Enter the Gungeon had sold over 75,000 copies on the Switch in just two weeks, surpassing all expectations. Another surprise developer was Tommy Refenez of Team Meat, who expected sales of Super Meat Boy on Switch to only be slightly more than the Wii U, which in Refenez's own words were quite poor. But Refenez said Meat Boy has sold well on the Switch, estimating it sold about 15% of its PC debut back in 2010. Refinez does think the comparison to PC is unfair because Meat Boy is 8 years old at this point and he didn't actually expect it to sell as much as it did on the Switch. But if you ask Brian Sigurdsson of Image and Form, developer of SteamWorld series, he'll tell you he was blown away by the success of his games on the Switch. Quote, on Switch we've sold many times what we've sold on Steam, somewhere between 5 and 10 times. But some indie devs believe while the Switch has been good for them so far, eventually Eventually, problems will start to emerge. Refinez said the success of the Switch will attract more developers to the platform, and the Nintendo eShop is only going to get more crowded, which might make it difficult for smaller devs to stand out. Sigurdsson agreed, saying the eShop storefront is still very rudimentary, and Sigmund explained the main advantage Steam has over the Switch is the regular discounts and sales like the Winter Sale and Midweek Madness discounts. Quote, Valve spends a lot of time thinking about how to expose more of the game catalogue, and that's going to become critically important on Switch too. Yeah, I think that's definitely right. I've, I've read a few think pieces and features and whatever on this in the last kind of few weeks. It is kind of a growing uh, concern now, I think, because the, the more and more um, developers flock to the Switch, the better the Switch's discoverability needs to be, just like Steam. Exactly the problem that Steam's got, except Steam has got so many more games. Valve having to work up different ways of showing the good games to people so that people buy those games. The eShop is still pretty basic, but, you know, the console is like less than a year old still, or just about a year old. It's about a year old! Just so over a year old. Just a, yeah, well, I tell you what, the Switch is about a year old, so it's, it's understandable, and uh, they do have discounts and stuff, but it does need to evolve, and... Uh, it's definitely a great place for indie games. I found that personally myself. It works really well with, with a nice indie game. But yeah, they're, they're going to have to kind of start working on the eShop soon to make it better. Great thing about the Switch and indie games that match made in heaven, really. At that like price point between 10 and 20 pounds or something like that, you, mm -hmm. you've got like 80, 90% chance of getting a really decent game. Whereas if you go to um, Steam, you've got an 80, 90% chance of getting trash, utter, complete garbage is what you get on Steam at, at, at any random sampling. So this is great, you know. You go, you go to the Switch. You know what you're getting. You're getting. You, obviously, they've um, they've filtered through these games. They don't just throw There's throw them on there. Curation, yeah. There is curation on the Switch it, yeah. platform. So it's great that these um, indie developers who might well get drowned out on Valve, they've got somewhere to go now. Ten, five to ten times as many sales on the Switch. Mm. That is enormous. And if that's not attractive for any indie developer, I don't know what is. I think Stardew Valley is still one of dominating the kind of the the, the sales chart on yeah. the, the eShop. It's just it's always been up there in the top kind of 15 it's just and that's a 10.99 indie game yeah. and you know it's a perfect fit golf story man i would never have experienced golf story if it wasn't for the nintendo switch it'll always have a place in my heart Elsewhere in the news this week, Joseph Fares, director of upcoming co-op game A Way Out, revealed some more details about his partnership with EA and being part of the EA Originals program. In an interview with The Sixth Axis, Fares revealed EA is not making any money off of A Way Out, despite being the publisher and primary financier. Quote, here's the thing, and you have to understand this, with this deal I have made for this game, EA is not making a single dollar out of this. Every single dollar is going to the developer, and they're not even making any money 
money and all I've got is support from EA. They've not questioned the vision, they can't because I won't allow it. So they've been super supportive all the way. This sounds great, but I'm still like, is that right? Is that really right? They're like not making any money on it. It's charity at that yeah. point, isn't it? They're just kind of, I guess maybe it makes sense for them PR terms if it's a good game and it shows that they're funding. I, can, I can't otherwise think of why they would do it. Doesn't sound like EA to me. Doesn't sound oh. like a big corporate business who's trying to squeeze every single last dime yeah. out of people. Doesn't sound like to me. It sounds like he's dealing with a different version of EA in his mind. Um, some, some is going, some smells fishy here, Mike. I wonder what it is. Maybe it's, maybe he's been told to say, I wonder, I wonder if he's been told to give EA some good publicity. Yeah. That's just speculation. I'm not saying he's, he's been paid to say that, that. That might be what it is. I tell you what, mate, we won't take any of the profits and we'll fund your game as long as you tell everyone that that is what we've done. <laughs> I would not pour it past the scheming EA at this point. And also this week, Ubisoft announced their medieval combat game For Honor is getting a reduced price version called the Starter Edition. Just like the Rainbow Six Siege Starter Edition, For Honors will cost $15 and come with all the maps and modes, but the selection of actual playable heroes will be limited. From the outset, players will have access to three heroes, the Warden, the Raider, and Kensei. Any other heroes will have to be unlocked using Steel, which is For Honors in-game currency. Community manager Eric Pope said on Reddit, quote, the starter edition is just one of the tactics we'll be using this year to continue growing the game and our community. While our console players currently enjoy the benefits of a very vibrant and sizable player base, our PC players have not had the same experience. A larger population on PC will be better for the health of our PC community, helping to reduce matchmaking times and opponent variety, while also increasing the level of competition in game. So the major drawback of this edition is that everything else in the game, everything that you purchase, all the extra characters and unlocks and everything else, it costs more steel to unlock, right? You're essentially buying a stripped down version of the game and it's gonna take you more grinding to get like everything else unlocked. So whether that's good or bad is, is, is I guess it's a dual edged sword. If you like playing the game and you wanna play it for as long as possible, then this is this is not a bad thing. Well, I, I th yeah, I think it's, it's great that they wanna get more players in the game and they obviously wanna build it. That's Ubisoft's strategy now. They'll keep working on the games, doesn't matter how much they look like they're, they're stuttering and stumbling after launch. They'll keep working at it, that's good. People really don't like the Rainbow Six Siege Starter Edition because the, the people who actually buy it resent it because they're locked into this worst version of the game and then it's very difficult to upgrade from it. And um, if you then decide you do like the game and you want to, you know, you want to progress just at the same rate as everyone else, you're gated off from a lot of the, the good content to begin with because you can't use the heroes. Now people saying For Honor, that's not as much of a problem because the, there's not, it doesn't rely on kind of balancing um, uh, operatives and stuff like it does in Rainbow Six Siege. You can play anyone and still do a decent job. The problem is still that you can't progress as quickly and whatever and it locks you into this grind which no one likes the to do that, do they? So yeah, I don't know. It's it's a difficult one for me because I'm I'm not playing the game, but it's interesting if you're a foreigner player, let us know what you think of this. And this week saw the sad passing of iconic scientist Professor Stephen Hawking, who died at the age of 76. Truly one of history's greatest scientific figures, tributes are paid to the great man all over the internet, and the world of gaming played its part too. In a touching tribute, Eve Online players lit up the darkness of space inside the MMO's shared universe with a series of bright beacons. The idea grew from a Reddit thread by user Kyriola with pilots across the new Eden area of EVE Online space, lighting bright beacons at 10 p.m. UTC, with many of those beacons staying lit for hours afterwards. This is really nice, we just wanted to, to mention this, this is a great little tribute for you playing some EVE Online and uh, you happen to you, you happen to spot some of these beacons, that's what it was, it was a tribute to Stephen Hawking, which is uh, lovely. I mean, his kind of discoveries and stuff played a huge role in uh, science fiction at the very least, you know what I mean? It's, if you've played a lot of video games, sci-fi video games and stuff, some of the work he did will have directly influenced what you've enjoyed there at the very least. Uh, so it's, it's yeah. great that gaming paid a tribute like that. Yeah, it's great that the gaming communities can come together and do something positive and not always get this toxic community label. These guys have done great and more power to them. And finally this week, Midwinter Entertainment is a new developer made up of former Halo and Battlefield developers who have just announced their first game, Scavengers. Scavengers is being billed as a PvP and PvE hybrid, similar to Halo 5's Warzone mode, which Midwinter says was a big inspiration. Teams of four players are dotted around an open world map and they will have to fight computer controlled enemies as well as other players. Scavengers is in active development and the developers are hoping to have the game in a playable state sometime this year looks really cool. I, I do like a good large scale kind of multiplayer 
game and the Halo 5 Warzone, never played it myself, but I've heard very good things about it and it was like, uh, it had a lot of potential. Um, so it's great that someone else has seen that former Halo devs, former Battlefield devs. Can't think of a better combination of developers, to be honest. Uh, they've seen that and gone, you know what, we can make a whole game out of this one mode and, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it looks really cool. So that was it for our Sunday roundup. What caught your eye in the news this week? Let us know down in the comments below. Like the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. Check out another one of our videos on your screen there. If you like the content, you want to support the channel, there's a link to Patreon right there. We'll see you again in the next video. Until then, bye for now.